Oh, well, hey, I can see you there. How's it going? Welcome. Uh, yeah, so today's project has nothing to do with this light, but I was moving it over here. So if you can take me seriously with this helmet on, let's get right to it. Project today, we're gonna work on the inside of the skid steer. We're gonna get it kind of all remodeled and, and fancy and a little bit better. So, you know, I'm not one for long speeches, but let's just get right into it. Okay, before I put the cab down, one of the next things we're gonna address is the seat situation. And it's always been like this. There's a bolt here and a bolt there. And it's never had whatever back bolts were originally holding it. And it's always been kind of cattywampus, kind of at an angle in there. And so it's loose. So let's undo these two bolts, pull the seat out. I've got a couple different seats we're gonna try, but I wanna get that out before we put the cab down. And then we're gonna work on the electrical panel and try and figure out what's going on with that. seat it's not totally garbage I might uh, definitely put it on something else I own that needs a seat but not on this all right set this thing down to set this thing down I put the throttle all the way forward and the, the bucket control, if you push it all the way forward, it floats. So I engage that and then usually it'll go straight down with anything. There we go. All right, so we've got these seat belts here and whatever kind of nut situation is on the end there is literally just almost gone. So I've got pliers there and I'm gonna hit this outside nut with the impact and hopefully it comes loose. I think I need a bigger impact. This one should do it. Maybe I need an extension. Yep, looks like it. Got it. So if I decide to use these seat belts again, I'll just get a new bolt. So I'll get that one out and the metal in here. So there was an inside, like a wall backing. That's where all this glue's from that I removed because it was all just completely soaked in water and had moss and stuff all over it. And there was a huge headliner up here that completely turned into a mouse condominium essentially. Obviously, at the end of the day, I don't want that. But what I'd want to do in here is I want to dress up the inside a little bit, make maybe remove some of the sound. And I've got a product from a company called Be Quiet that's going to help me line this and make it look nicer, but also function better. So let's get the other side of the seatbelt out. We'll put the cab back down and then we'll start cleaning it up. Water has obviously gotten in and completely rusted the bottom of this metal here. You know, this machine, big holes right through there. Um, this machine sat outside for a long time before I got it, and it was just sitting on a trailer. Um, I wish I had the recovery footage of it. I didn't have to do a lot to really recover this, but it had a lot of little things that were wrong with it, and that's kind of what we're going through now. But let's get the other one off. It is quite literally snowing in April. I don't know what to think about this.
I'm going to cover the engine up, but this hydraulic cylinder leaks and we're going to get to that soon, but I want to get all this oil off so it doesn't get all over my drop cloths. This one is a fiberglass blanket. It resists burning, use it for welding and things. And so we're gonna be doing a little welding here and a little cutting. And so I'm gonna put this over the engine bay. Okay, so the seat pan here has gotten kind of rusted through. There's rust holes here and as you can see the light there's a big rust hole there these are the holes for mounting and then it's gotten real thin right through this area where the mounting holes for the seat were so i thought about cutting that whole thing out um and just replacing it i don't really think that's necessary i think i'm just going to weld another plate right over it and then maybe fabricate something else for that top edge or maybe i'll find a piece that i can bend up and just weld and then what i want to do is i want to drill some drain holes in the seat so that water can actually just drain straight out and i think that's what caused all this is behind the seat got a bunch of like leaves and junk and debris and then water just pooled up in there and caused it to rot out so the other thing we're going to do is and the reason we scraped all that glue off is we're going to throw a coat of uh, paint on this, let that dry, and then we're going to coat it with some sound deadening material. Um, basically going to line the whole cab as much as we can, and we've got a different product. We've got a few different products. I'll show you those when we get to it. Um, and then we still have to go through all the electrical, and there's a few other things I want to do in here. But let's start with the seat pan, because without that done, we can't really get to... Um, mounting the seat or doing some of the other layers. 
I want to put the seat in, get it mounted, get the holes drilled, and then we'll pull it back out and we'll do all the sound deadening. All right, so I got this sheet of metal. We're going to cut out the seat pan out of it. And assuming I do it where the actual bottom back corner, I bend it, I need 21 inches about. This is uh, 21 and 3 quarters. That will work fine. It'll be plenty. So, and then width wise, we need is it 22 and 5 eighths. Kind of like little one inch angles. All right, so we're gonna chop the little corners off, cut that off, we'll cut it slice, sit along the bottom. Figured it out, it was a bad ground. Should work now. Find out. All right, I need 15 inches from the very front to where I'm going to bend it. So Something like that. Now let's make a, uh, a CAD design of the bend angle. We're gonna go with that right there. So that is our bend angle. So we'll take this back to the workshop and we'll see if my uh, old school bender will bend that metal. We're gonna use my, my metal bender, metal brake. It's a JN, JM Robinson and Co. Dates back to 18, uh, I think it's 1882. So, find out if you can bend this. All right, here we go. Kind of wondered, might be too thick.
Let's give it a shot bending it now. I scored it all the way across. We'll see what happens. working a little more to go there we go go there's our bend angle that should do nicely here's the pan seat pan that we made got it all bent up now I've got two seat options one this is your standard skid steer seat type style and I already put the actual uh, sliders from the previous seat on it so we could have an adjustable seat if we wanted and then this seat is a suspension seat it's got a built-in seat belt not that i care about that you can adjust how heavily tensioned it is and then you can go slide back and forth so i've been debating this one basically sits about an inch higher than this one um i think i'm going to go with this one it fits in there really nicely it's very comfortable the back is adjustable back and forth the plan will be to set up and mark the holes on this pan and then install that pan and then we can drill straight through. I don't think the plan is gonna be to remove that piece of metal. We're just gonna weld that one in and then drill some holes for drainage because if it does sit out, we don't want it to get any worse. And at the end of the day, I look at it like by cutting that out, I'm losing some strength that's already there. And we're covering this whole thing with, um, with sound deadening mat and a a liner that'll be coming up here in a minute so so for right now let's work on getting some holes drilled in the pan for the seat and then we'll work on getting it installed in the machine all right i think i got it all marked or laid out i'm gonna mark it now Here is our pan we made. And so I'm just going to weld it in there just like that. I'm not cutting out the old. It will be fine. It's going to be stronger that way. And I mean, it's going to be overbuilt. So let's uh, get a little mark on the areas we need to.
Not quite sure if this is going to help anything, but we're going to give it a shot. There. And then I think what we're going to do, spray the bottom and the back of that. There we go. All right, there we go. Got it all tacked in. I'm gonna get it welded back up all the way around and then uh, we'll move on. Got it welded all the way along the edge, all the way around. And then I welded it below where the two pieces of metal meet. So yeah, that should be fine. It's not Ain't the prettiest it? weld, but whatever. It's kind of hard to weld rusty metal where it's pitting. You have to kind of almost just burn through it because I didn't want to grind too deep into it just due to the fact that I I would end up grinding all the way through. So this will be a big improvement from what was there. I mean, there was literally almost nothing there. And we'll have it mounted with four bolts instead of just the two that were in front and basically falling apart. So I'm working on stripping stuff out of the cab and I've got this panel out, got that panel out, got the wires disconnected because I'm going to paint the inside of this cab completely before I do the, um, the sound deadening mat just because now's the time to do it. So 
And then the other thing I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna strip these lights off. So there's two lights here on the front and one back here on the back. So we're gonna be changing those over to a totally different style and way, way brighter. So let's get those stripped off now and we'll keep going in the cab there. All right, we're gonna give this uh, rust converter, rust reformer a shot. So we're gonna spray it on all the spots that the rust has uh, gotten into. Um, spray this dash panel with this rust reformer. All the pitting makes it look like hammered chrome. <laughs> it's going for a little accent. So the plan is not to paint the whole machine, but we are gonna paint the cab and give it a little bit of a dress up. So I've got the window taped off here. I'm gonna hit this back area where it's kind of rusty with this rust reformer. I've already scraped off all the chips and kind of wire brushed it. So we're gonna hit that and then we'll end up doing the whole cab in a new color actually so let's get this on there for now Yeah. All right, so here in the cab, I've got everything stripped out of it. Everything is taped off. Got all the decals removed except for that one right there. And I'm just gonna give this 
one more final coat of the black before we go putting the interior in. Now, we have completely painted the cab black. And so it looks pretty good. The only area that doesn't really look good is right here where the, the rust got down to the metal. So I think what we'll do is uh, probably sand that down to bare metal again and just try and get that rust pitting basically the areas where you see the roughness smoothed out and then we'll hit that with one more coat not that it really matters but it will make it look better so i think i'm going to do that but for at this minute we're going to get the inside sprayed So what he's doing with his hand there, when you rub your hand on something like this, you can feel the imperfections. You can feel how smooth it is. And so you take your hand over it and you find the rough spots and that's where you work. Because we're not doing a restoration here. We're just trying to make it look better. And a paint job will do that, but I don't want to just throw a paint job on junky vase. So. We're doing a little bit more work than you would normally do on just a spray and pray. So I pulled the hood or whatever we want to call this off the machine. We're going to paint it, but there's one decal here that kind of the operator service guide that has grease zerk locations and some other minor things to look at. So. I want to tape this off. I don't know if I can get a new sticker, but if I can't, then I'd rather have uh, at least this here. There's the pin for the hinge. The door is not light.
That way we can paint it and not worry about overspray. That turned out pretty good. We'll let that dry and then we'll uh, hit it with the black. Little copper anti-seize for these uh, hinge pins for the rear door.
Start working on the inside of the cab here so there are these holes i don't know if that's for a speaker i don't know what these are for i have no idea but instead of doing that and leaving them open there um i made this plate and it's basically just going to go over it like that and the reason is that i really want to seal off any water that if it does get into this cab it can't drain straight down onto the engine um, and so i'll cover most of those up there's like another bolt hole there, bolt hole here. I'll find something to throw in those. And then that would be, that'll work well. And the way that we're going to seal it up is we're just going to use some silicone caulk. So we've got this RTV silicone and we're going to put it on this and yeah, should work well. There's our seal. All right, this should all be on. Okay. Which one next? Top corner. Tell me one. Let's get to installing some sound deadening material. I got three different products. One here, one here, and one here. So these are all from a company called Be Quiet, and essentially I've got three different products. This is your classic sound deadening material that has a sticky back. You peel this white off, and this is an adhesive side, and you would stick that to whatever. And then this aluminum plus the material itself helps to deaden the sound and also help with heat. So we're gonna be putting that on the inside of the cab below the seat, kind of behind it, kind of on each side. So that'd be the first product we use. Next up in the cab, we're gonna finish it with this. It's got like a foam backing on this side, and then there's like a rubber kind of mat on this side. So I don't technically know if it matters which side goes out, but I'm gonna glue the foam side directly inside the machine so that I have this rubber side as the finished look. That'll be, I think it'll really finish 
the cab a lot better than having it look all foam like this. So that's going to be for in the cab. And finally, we've got this material here, which is a basically a heat dampener. And so it is a sticky backed. And this will go beneath the cab and we'll stick that in the engine bay to insulate the engine from the cab itself. So a big shout out to Be Quiet. And if you're interested in checking their products out, the link is down in the description. All right, let's get this first uh, layer in. So we need about 31 inches. measure one out that's actually 31. I don't think I got it right. Let's do it on the bench. Come on, go in your home. <laughs> should do it. Just for that part. Looking good, though. Okay, so I got this whole cab lined with the sound deadener and basically trying to figure it out the sizes of the next layer that's going to go over it. So I'm basically going to do a piece here, a piece there, here. There'll be a section there, section here, section on the roof that goes all the way. 
And then if I have enough, we'll do the side and the side. And I'm not sure if I have enough of the product. If not, I've got another idea. Uh, I've got some black vinyl. I might uh, just spray adhesive onto there. But basically, I've got all these measured and figured out. And then same with that and that. I'll show you the product. This is called... This is Be Quiet's V-Comp material. And it has this foam liner on this side. And this is the side that goes against wherever the sound is coming from. And then a rubber matting on the other side. So I want this side out anyway. Now, Another thing you could say is, why am I trying to add sound deadening to an open cab skid steer? Well, it's, it's partially sound deadening, but it's a lot more heat trying to keep that down in the engine bay and away from the operator you do get pretty dang hot in in this cab there's no ac or or fan or anything but it's also another liner to kind of just protect the cab itself it will do some sound deadening and that's what we're going for really happy with the way the material went in as far as that goes next up we're going to get the cutting the pieces i need out of this and go from there so i've got these two pieces and i've been kind of marking out what i need where to try and make sure that you know i don't waste any so let's jump right into that Let's put this first piece in. I think what we're going to do is we're going to measure the top, measure the bottom, and cut an angle. I think that's the issue I'm having here. All right, so up there I've got 30 and a half. Down here, I've got 32, say 32 and 3 eighths. So what we need to do is take our 30 and a half, center it in this top. So 30 and a half. Oh, we got one and a half inches there and half inch there. So we gotta move this way. So we got one inch there and an inch. And a quarter, so let's move an eighth of an inch over. One and an eighth. One and an eighth. Let's mark thirty and a half and zero. So those will be where our angles will start here and go down to the far corner. One and an eighth. One and an eighth. Go try this. It's a 
heck of a lot more taper than uh, thought it should have, but look what we'll do here. We got this one side looking good over here. All right, with a little help of uh, cardboard aided design, we got the mock up for this template here for this window. So I basically made that on the machine. And now I've transferred it to this by measuring all over the place, making sure I'm in the right spot. And I guess it's now or never. We'll cut it and we'll find out if it's right. <laughs> All right, well, there's our window. Let's see if it fits. All right. I cut a little bit inside the line just to be safe. So far, that's looking good. You have to get the glue out to really make this look good, but I got a little trimming on the side. In the corner, maybe. All right. Let's get some glue and see if we can't make this fit. And then we'll trim it in place. Got some uh, contact cement, basically a spray glue. I'm going to spray it on here and then we'll spray it on the actual liner as well. Oop. Now uh, we're just going to try and uh, just do it on the one side, see what happens. Okay, we're going to add some to the back of this too. All right, there's what we got so far. Got that, got this one. We're gonna do the seat pan next. 
keep on rolling. All right, on this one, I shouldn't have to worry about spraying the foam, so we're not going to. All right, next up, I want to caulk basically around the window here in the corners and edges just to kind of seal them up a little bit. It doesn't really matter. This is mostly just for looks to try and, you know, kind of get some of that silver around the window to disappear and then some of the imperfections in the corners. So I've got this quad basically it's a window um door and siding caulk that we're gonna use and Be a little messy, but I think it'll improve. Looks good. Looking good. I personally like the black way better than I'd like the gray. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, I'm going to get those bolts tight. So one of the problems on old machines with these hoods that have these gas shocks is that they always go bad, always. Now, I know I could replace this, I could get a new one. It only technically had one right here on this side, but there are holes over here. I could add a second one, so there would be two holding it, 
which would be fine until it stops working. So I want to come up with a mechanical way to install some sort of a latching mechanism that will hold the door up while I'm working under the hood, but then quickly allow me to set it right back down and close it. So here's kind of what I've thought. We'll take this little aluminum angle iron. I'm gonna bolt it right there. There's already a hole. And then I've been trying different size uh, door latches like this, locks. And so this will get mounted right here. And then that way you can open and close that latch. And then when it's over sideways like this, it will come in contact with the aluminum angle iron bracket that we'll have there on the side, making it so that it'll mechanically hold itself Lift it a little higher, move that out of the way, and then you can go right back to quickly shutting the hood. And then I don't have to worry about constantly. I, I had this two by four that I would just keep right here. And every time I wanted to pop the hood, I'd prop it up with the two by four. My worry was always that bouncing around with the skid steer, running it, it'd get bound up in here in the radiator or get over there and get into the fan. So it, this will take literally no time four bolt holes, a couple of the holes to, one hole to drill in that aluminum bracket, and then we'll be good to go. So let's get that done. Alright, I got these stainless bolts. So the other day I had an issue where I had that smoking problem coming out of the, the actual dash panel. And this is the reason why. You see that terminal there? It's completely melted out. This is the terminal. I couldn't really figure out what the issue was. See how that's loose? That's part of it. Now, come, some of that could have been from just the internals getting hot and melting. But I, I bought a bunch of these. They're cat, quote unquote, ignition switches. But the actual cat keys don't work in them. So, whatever. It's an ignition switch. Been doing a little looking and trying to figure out what the heck happened in here. The wiring is in pretty dang good shape. But... I didn't have a different switch, I just had this one. What I think may have happened was these are not full ring terminals. A ring terminal would look like that, completely round. And these are like the split ring terminals. So if you just slightly loosen that screw, the whole thing will come out. I am kind of wondering if one of these screws backed out enough that it came in contact with another one of the wires. And when it did that, that caused it to start shorting out and smoking. So 
I think what my plan is here is to take this back out, cut all of these wires, crimp new full ring terminals on each end, and then shrink tube the heck out of it just to protect it in case that ever happens again. Um, I don't see any other real solution to it. Um, I mean, I threw all this tape in here. I just, I needed the machine to run that day. So I put this switch in and just used it the way it was. But even like a big power wire like that, touching the case right here, that would do it right there. I can already feel that one's loose. And that's our main battery wire. So I got to figure out a way to put this together so that nothing is going to contact something it shouldn't. When I'm working on electrical stuff, I like to label it as it comes off. And so sometimes I'll use these adhesive labels and I'll just write BAT so for battery, peel this off, and then you fold it around the wire and it's a quick label. Just like that. Now we know where that wire goes. All right, next up, we're going to address the light situation. So this is what the machine had on it. It had two of these in the front and one of them in the rear. And this, it, it was okay. It had lights and it worked. But I reached out to Oxbeam and basically they sent me the ultimate kit for the skid steer. So I think what we're going to do, we're going to put a 22-inch light bar on the front we're gonna have two square beams facing straight down on the front. Each side is gonna have a seven inch light bar. And then the rear is gonna have two 80 watt um, square lights going straight back. So this is a 22 inch curved light bar, 120 watt. Um, these, these are three inch 40 watt square lights. And these are also three inch cube lights that are 80 watt. These seven inch light bars are 300 watts. So we're gonna have some massive light output here. The switch on the dash for the lights has three positions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set one position up for forward lighting, one position up for front and rear lighting, and then the third position up for front, rear, and side lighting. And I think that'll give me the best ability to use the different lightings in different situations. Um, for instance, if I'm just driving straight down a road, I don't really want lights to the sides or to the or to the back. And there may be times where I don't want side lights. This will give me that option. Every one of these kits comes with its own, basically full wiring harness as if you don't have anything at all to hook to. Um, so you can go all the way back to the batteries. It's got an on off button here different modes uh, We're probably not gonna mess with any of that. We're gonna run this directly to the Panel and then we're gonna connect all of our lights up above we're gonna make a, a ceiling and We're gonna connect all the lighting up there and then cover that so Let's start diving into these kits, getting everything set up, and we'll f I'll show you kind of where I'm thinking everything's going to go. We may not use them all. We're going to see what it looks like with them all on, and then we'll go from there. All right, 
So this is the spot. I'm going to put these two lights, basically the factory mounting spot. And then right above it, I'm going to put the 22 inch light bar, something like that. So I was originally wanting it in here, you know, and then we would have gotten rid of the square lights. Problem is, if I mount it in there, I lose some visibility sitting in the cab, and I also um, have a, another thing to rack my head in when you get in and out. So I've decided the reason these squares are there is to allow yourself the ability to see up through, but also still be protected. So it works out almost perfect if I stick this light Let's see here, right about right about there. And then when I sit in the cab, you can't actually see the light bar. So you're not, I'm not really eliminating any visibility from that. Plus, if you look at it, that light bar is going to get everything right there and maybe we'll pitch that one up some more so it gets further out and then we use these two corner ones to get the ground directly in front so yeah let's we'll give that a shot so let's let's get that mounted and then we'll keep moving around on the lights There's little rubber uh, mounting pads, little rubber isolators. Yeah, that's gonna work well. All right, I'm gonna use this bolt hole right here for the LEDs on the side. They're gonna go right there. I gotta cut, puncture a hole through that sound deadening. See that? You cannot hit that light with the arm here. It's in a great spot. And we can adjust it this way or that way so we can go further out with the beam. I think this is pretty much all the way down. So we're going to start there. I'm going to do the other one and then we'll get the back lights installed. Something like that. There we go. All right, so I'm working on the wiring, trying to figure out what wires go to the lights. So I've got this switch here, and it's already the factory one. It has three positions for different settings. Um, and I'm going through the wires, figuring out, so, 41 is tail lights, 42 is rear work lights, 43 is headlights, and then 40, which one's 40? That's 41. 40 is currently the front lights. So it jumps over to this 012F. So we're just going to call this front. So that's just currently how it's wired. Some of these wires don't get used because in the wiring diagram, there are lights for hazard lights, rear tail lights, brake lights. And I don't care about any of those. All I want is three circuits. I want to be able to turn the front lights on. I want to be able to turn the front and rear lights on. 
and then I want to be able to turn the front, rear, and side lights on. And so I only need three of the circuits to work, so that's what we're going to do. Now, the other thing that I installed these little seven inch light bars and they look fine, but they've got a ton of different modes and the modes basically don't allow you to change without their controller in line. So I'm going to show you why if, if this thing came on and it was just pure white light, it would be fine, but it comes on with amber and white. So I'm going to shut the lights off. So I got a, a battery charger connected with 12 volts here. So as you see, there is a, there's white on the sides and then an amber in the middle. And it just puts out almost like a sapia type color. And I'm just not, not liking it. The, let me see if I can, where's the controller at? So if I wanted all white, I could change the mode. So that would be all white and that would be fine. I, I really would have no issue with that. That's basically without the amber color. Problem is that if I remove this controller here out of it, it defaults to just this setting. And I'm not okay with that because the front and rear lights are that white color and I don't want that amber color to the side. I just think it'll be, it'll just make it harder to, to work with. So we're gonna remove those side lights. We're actually gonna replace them with the same ones as we have on the back. All right, so I just painted this dash again and I have one of the decals that came off. I, I don't, I think it goes right like that yeah it does yep that's the top we our light switch fuse and then there's a you could put a horn in and i'm thinking about it but you'd use that hole there doesn't currently have one so we're going to spray glue this back on The electrical panel all buttoned up we've got an inline 30 amp fuse there used to be one right in that spot on the front of the panel i couldn't find exactly what i needed but i had an inline style so i just kind of dangled it slightly below this is the bottom of the electrical panel so basically be here so i'll just tuck this fuse just up like that got all the wires for the um, start switch looking good all nice and ring ring terminals on them i soldered all the connections on the actual switch itself all the ones that weren't being used i put some shrink tubing on it and kind of basically folded the end over and then we've got our harness here so this blue wire white wire and this red wire are running to this harness here so these are my three lights. So I've got the rear, the side, and the front. And the way it'll work is I'll be able to turn the front on, the front and back on, and the front, back, and sides on all at the same time. So, and that's with the factory switch here. Switch is a off, and that's got one, two, three positions. So we're using, we're using what they call, let's see what we're using, 40, 42, and 43. So 40 they're calling front, 42 is rear work lamps, and 43 is headlamps. So we're using those circuits. So I'm going to peel off the rest of this tape. So yeah, 
There we go. So I sprayed the dash silver, just, I don't know, a little bit of an accent color on the inside of the cab. So let's get this dash put back in, and then we're going to keep going on getting the lights finally wired up. There we go. And then I have way too much wire. That was on purpose so that I didn't end up with not enough. And then I already chopped off this pigtail here. So we're going to feed this wire in through uh, this hole here. That, and then this one, like that. Now we'll make all of our connections up here for all of the wiring and all the lighting so yeah before we go any further though i'm gonna hook up the battery and we're gonna check and just make sure that uh everything still works the way it should all right so i don't think i'm gonna get my way on this uh switch i powered it and essentially my headlights were on all the time i wasn't it wasn't switched at all so the way this looks is it's got one lighting function here two here and a third different one there. What I really want is one light on here, two lights on here, three lights on here. So I don't think that's going to be possible. So I think what I'll do is I'll just make it so that, man, it's a, it's a balance. I'd like, like front lights only. And then I'd like to be able to turn on the back lights same time as the front lights. And then I'd like to be able to then turn on the side lights in addition to all of them. So how do I pick? Maybe front lights only? And then everything? That's probably what I'll do. So my front lights are yellow 47 which is this wire. So I'll connect these two together. And my, well, everything else is 41 and 43. So position two will be 41 and 43. And what is 43 rear lights? So I guess what I could what I'll have here is I'll have front only, rear only, and um, everything in the middle. Just here, 41. This is red one, this one goes to black. So I am using these shrink tube solder connectors. So essentially there's solder right down in there. You slide this up and over. And you use a heat gun and it will melt it. Can connecting the two wires solidly together and then it has shrink tube on each side of it but then i pull a whole nother piece up over it after it's the connection has been made And once that's done, pull this trick tube up over, cover the whole thing. And 
All right, that should do it. We'll test the functionality of the actual switch after this is cooled. So I'll have front only, everything rear only. It's going to be the way it is. All right, let's test and make sure that each of these wires does what it should. So if you look here, we're looking for 12 volts. This is our front, this is our side, and this is our rear lights. Here's our switch, let's put it back to off. Turn the key to on. So now we should not have any power at any of these, not 12 volts anyway. So this is in an auto range, so it will literally show a number regardless. And so it's basically showing me zero. Now let's turn this to the first switch. This should be front lights. So we have 11.83, so that's perfect. Nothing and nothing. If we turn to the middle, this should give us power at all three of them. So front, yep, middle, yep, back. Yep, and then this last switch should give us only in the back. So we got power there, nothing there, and nothing there. So it's a compromise. I guess I have rear only instead of everything all at once. So, but the main ones I want is everything on or just the front on. So we have that, we're gonna go with it. All right, I'll show you what the lights in the front look like. Ready? Boom. I would say those put out a decent amount of light. Blam! And that's just Two in the front and the light bar on top. Got all of our wiring kind of nicely tucked up for all the lights. Still have the ground wires. But what I'm working on right now is, see right along that top, see that black vinyl? I'm covering the sound editing material with some cheap black, black vinyl. I did it down here. We've got one on that side. And so I've got one more to make up there and we'll glue it on and it'll look awesome. So the whole goal here is it's, it's not perfect. It's good enough. And for, you know, an open cab skid steer, I think we've come a long way. Now I have one more thing that we're going to add. So I found this, I was looking for a way to trim kind of the edges. I found this, what do they call this? Insert for tempered glass. So it's basically like this channel that, you know, it's kind of like a plastic thing. Well, I took and I made some pieces here and I'll show you what they're gonna do. So we've got kind of this this edge here that doesn't look very nice. Take this, slip it over that. Boom. That looks so much better. And then, let's see which side is this. I've got one that's gonna go right there. Cut. I've got another one for this side over there. Another little 90 for that corner. And then the very front of the seat here is going to be this one. So it'll go a little something like that. So, yeah. That looks so much better than 
than the uh, that edge. And it's going to be hidden anyway. The seat will be kind of hovering around that spot. The goal is not to be perfect here. It's literally just to make it look nice enough and kind of finished. All right, here's our strip. So we're going to spray glue it. A little bit of glue residue will wipe off after this dries, but yeah, that's a big improvement right there. So next up, we're going to work on the roof and we'll get a seat in, a few other miscellaneous things. All right, so we've got all the wiring completely installed above in the roof there. Got this loose because we're going to make a, a ceiling panel. There are four bolts, one there, one there, basically one at each corner. And so the plan is to make a panel to cover all this, but also add an additional layer of this same sound deadening material that's in the cab. So I will show you the lights in a minute. Only thing we have left to do with wiring is there's a ground on that side I have to ground, and then I've got two grounds for the other two circuits over there. Um, got all the trim in, got the black vinyl, at the top, got it on both sides here. It's starting to look nice in there. So the ceiling is gonna be made out of this thin plywood here. And I cut a piece to fit in there. And then these four holes will be how we mount it. And so this is what we're gonna glue to that board. And it'll look like that. So that'll, that'll look really nice. Not that sound deadening in this cab really makes a big difference because it doesn't. Because this is an open cab, it is not an enclosed cab by any means, but it will help with echo, the loudness. It will bring that down for the operator in there. It'll make it, you know, there's going to be less heat coming from the engine, etc. Plus, this is just going to be way nicer to operate and, and use. And it's going to look one heck of a lot better. It already does. It looks a thousand times better. So let's get that glued on and we'll get it installed. All right, we'll let that dry and then we'll put it in. See how it looks. Beautiful. Punch out the holes for screws or the bolts, I mean, and then throw this thing in there. See how it looks.
Yeah, that's looking good. Need a little little trimming here and there, but sure does hide a lot. All right, from day one of ripping that seat out, I have been excited about getting this seat in. So this is a suspension seat. So it will literally give me a little bit better ride as built-in seat belt that I will never use. Um, can adjust the seat, can go forward and back. And then it has a, a manual drawer that I will also never use. Let's get it in. I already got the bolts in it. I'm gonna take these nuts off. Yeah, that's how it's going to look. I'm going to save you the hassle of getting it bolted in because it's not going to be pretty. But I'll show you when we got it in there and then we'll get the lap bar in and be ready to take it out in the dark and test it. All right. All right. Well, check it out. I think we made a massive improvement from the complete cab getting painted black to, I don't know if I showed you this or not, but I made this latch mechanism. Changed some fluids, got some new filters in it. We completely caulked all the way around that window on both sides. I've got some bolts that are gonna go in those holes. Every hole that exists in the cab, I'm gonna fill with a bolt. And the reason for that is to try and Eliminate as many egresses for water to get in and then run down the cab and rot it out like it did previously. But got the two rear lights, got the side light, the light bar, and the front lights. Brand new seat, completely redone cab, and then just basically the black accent all the way around it. So all right, so there's going to be a lot of you who are going to be like, oh, I can't believe you didn't redo the yellow. Well, two reasons. Number one, I just don't care at the moment. And number two, the goal wasn't to do a full restoration on this. The goal was to clean it up. And I went way beyond what I planned on doing in regards to the cab. I wasn't planning to paint it. I was planning to throw a seat in it. I was planning to put a couple of lights on it and call it good. We've been through the complete electrical system on the machine. We have, I mean, it's just a mountain of things that we've gotten done. But without further ado, I say, rather than chatting and just talking your ear off on this old dog, let's show you what it looks like outside at nighttime. All right, let's check this thing out. Now, I did get a little hasty and uh, already got it dusty and dirty, but whatever. It's all good. Yeah, it's looking so much nicer. You can see the lights better. We've got an oil filter that's not dangling by a zip tie. We got some new fluids in it. Even, even if we open this, I 
painted all of the trim in there, painted the full inside of that door. Yeah, we got this thing looking much, much nicer, and it's nicer to operate. The seat is really comfortable. So what's next for this old dog? Well, first off, the cylinders. We need to rebuild at least all four cylinders, these two and the two on the sides. And then there are two cylinders underneath for the steering. Those need to get rebuilt. Uh, there's a leak here on the quick connector for the attachment. Um, we need to get in and check the chains, make sure they're good. And at some point soon, I want to try and convert this or make an adapter plate from the Gale style connector to the universal quick coupler so I can use additional attachments on this machine that don't have that setup. I like that setup because to change, to, to disconnect the pin, all you do is boom. And then the pin pulls out of both sides and you can just push the attachment right off, get your new one back on, boom. Both pins go in at the same time rather than one at a time like on the universal style. Because there's just so many additional attachments they can use on this machine if it's got that style. Right now I've got two buckets and two sets of forks for my gales and that's it. One thing about a skid steer is anybody can do it. They are very, very useful little machines. So what I was working on that got me dusty already is we've got a new leak and it's not a leak. The back corner, there are three new springs that have opened up and they are literally running. You can see this is, this water is moving. It is current. And so what I did was I took a ton of gravel from over there, filled it in over here, and then literally made a channel for this water. It was, there was water all through here and all over there. It was not staying in one path going right to this drain. But as you can see, this is standing water that is running. All right, here's the drain and it is leaking at a pretty good flow. So this I would call at the moment Cave River. Not my favorite thing in the world, especially with all the work I did to fix the water issues on that corner, only to have another, I think it's technically three springs open up on that back corner. Frustrating, frustrating, but I guess at some point we'll get it dealt with. This was just kind of a containment deal that's why the skid steer looks all dusty and dirty is I, second I got that thing done, I brought it out here that evening and just tried to make this less of a mud pit. It, this was, I'd call it Cave Lake, but now it's reduced to Cave River. If you stuck around this far, then I would like to consider you one of the true members of the Salvage Nation here at Salvage Workshop. So, I have all kinds of additional machines and projects and equipment and just crazy ideas coming on the channel here. So, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It really does help the channel. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked. Let me know what you didn't like. It really does help me decide and help kind of work through what you want to see and what I can, I can create that's really going to be enjoyable for you as well as for me. Everybody wants me to get back to Old Red, and I'll be straight with you. When it comes to Old Red, the main reason that I stopped making content on Old Red was Old Red needs a complete new undercarriage. And we're talking eight to $15,000 in parts for a machine that's gonna be worth five to 10 once it's running and operating. And so it's a struggle for me. I don't really see the value in that. I know everyone wants to see it running. So I need your help in one of two ways. I need you to either help me find undercarriage for a Caterpillar track loader, a 955 12A serial number, or would you consider buying merchandise, t 
t-shirts, hats, stickers, because we're considering getting into it, and I'd love to know your feedback. The other thing, I still have the idea of selling track pads from Old Red, signing them, maybe even laser engraving each of them with an Old Red and a Salvage Workshop logo. Um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I know everybody really wants to see Old Red come back to life, as do I. And I just kind of spent some time around him the other day, kind of looking at and trying to figure out what I could do. So, if you'd like to help, leave a comment below and let me know. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching the video series on the skid steer. There will be more from that little thing, and it's going to be around a lot. I hope you'll stick around. I hope you'll subscribe. You never know. You might just enjoy it. You guys have a great one.